Hey, thanks for clicking the link. I'm Matt and this is a season three opener to Outdoors for a Change. I am so stoked you're here. I'm so stoked you're watching. I'm glad. I wish you could be right here in the kayak with me. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun fishing today. I'm out on a local lake near my home. You might hear a little bit of uh, car noise. Uh, this is... Uh, well, it's really close to my home and uh, we live in the city and uh, you'll hear vehicle noise. That's just part of the game, I guess, when we fish. But there's huge fish in this lake. So many people in our city, our small town of uh, Mason, they skip it and they go further away to some of the more remote lakes. And meanwhile, the fish keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So I am here with three rods today. I have my... Uh, my light action i got that four pound mono on that then i have a medium light with eight pound mono and also a medium heavy with 10 pound mono i i this, this i'm done with using braided line that's all i use in the past uh, on the channel but this year this season i'm just going to go straight mono filament except for my frog rod that'll be 40 pound braid and, and a heavy rod but everything else is going to be mono uh, mainly because I'm not that great at tying leaders on, and when you break off, uh, usually the leader breaks, then you have to not only tie a new leader, but then you have to tie a new lure on, and uh, that gets really old for me. Uh, my eyesight uh, is fantastic. It's great for a man of 54 years old, but it's not what it was before. And uh, so I'm just trying to make things easier for me uh, this fishing season, and as I progress further on into the uh, into my fishing career not really a career uh, what's different about this uh, season I have uh, three camera angles I have the camera in the back uh, and I have the camera on the side you might notice the angles a little higher than it was last year before it was me looking down and you can see my double chin and my big fat belly uh, it wasn't a really uh, what's the word I'm looking for it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a good look uh, but uh, now I have that raised a little bit so we can look eye to eye and you can kind of see over my shoulders to see what, what's behind me. Also, I got a new camera mount on the front and uh, of, the, of the boat. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, today is uh, on the four pound test on my light action rod, I got just a bobber and uh, a float and uh, a weight and a sinker, sinker and a small hook and I got red worms. We'll see what's happening with the uh, panfish in the area. Also on the light action I'll throw light MEP spinners and on the on the medium light rather and the medium heavy I got some top water I'll uh, we'll play with. So I don't know what is where the fish are here today. Uh, it's all different. The water temperature is under 40 degrees. It's it's really cold. And I'm not sure where the fish are when the water is this temperature. And my fish finder, I couldn't find the wire uh, in the garage that plugged it into the battery. So we're going to go old school style without a battery. I also didn't bring an anchor, mainly because uh, it was the last thing I was getting ready to put on the kayak. But my kayak is filled to the brim with, uh, I don't know, just with the new cooler and uh, my, my tackle bag. i got to figure things out in here to get a little more organized so it's not so much effort to uh, get out here fishing. But I'm going to start with red worms. I think uh, that's going to be the order of the day. If I do catch panfish, I will keep them and eat them and we'll do a catch and cook. Not sure how deep water is here either. So we're going to guesstimate. All right, we're fishing. I want to thank our season three sponsor of the channel. Took a lot of effort to uh, get this sponsor. I 
I wish. I think it takes more than 350 subscribers to get a McDonald's sponsorship, huh? All right, I'm not real patient when I'm uh, pan fishing with worms. Uh, usually, if they're hungry, they're going to bite. If they're there, they're going to bite. And leaving it in the same place for too long is a waste of time. I'll reel it in a little bit, maybe they're there. Then I'll reel it in a little further, maybe they're there. But 30 seconds is, is enough with a red worm, with bluegill and sunfish. Because if they're there, they're going to bite it. If they're not, they're not. So why am I still going to hang out someplace where they're not? I'm definitely going to have to lose some stuff in the uh, kayak. And not bring it next time. I think one is my tackle bag. I'm going to drag this red worm all over this section. If they're in here and if they're ready to eat, they're going to eat and I'm going to find them. It feels so awesome to be back out here. One thing I've forgotten the last five, six months since I've been in the kayak is how much effort it takes to uh, get Get everything loaded up. It's like man. Shallow. Right, that bobber didn't stand up, so I know. I got a fish. No. Get the drag set so t loose that it wouldn't. First break off of the season. I'm gonna throw some top water out here before I tie back on again. The first whopper plopper cast of the 2024 spring season.
All right, I'm gonna move. I gotta get my bobber though. It's a little map spinner. Not a maps, it's something else. Competitor of maps. So a lot of you know that by now, if you've been watching the at least more than a couple of my videos, that I'm that I'm a Christian. You can I'll, I haven't really talked much about that in the channel, but I figured that now it's a pretty good time to do that. I've been a born again Christian since 1995. And, uh, and what does it mean to be a born again Christian? Well, basically the mindset of the world is that man is intrinsically good like humanism, like if man just given enough tools and could learn to, to work with one another that they would accomplish awesome things. That man by nature is good in his heart. And uh, the Bible tells us something different, that there's no one righteous on their own. Not one. Out of the billions of people on the planet, there's not one righteous by their own works. And you may be a lot better person than I am. You may do better things. You may do less bad things than I am. But that, unfortunately, doesn't make you righteous. A righteous person is one who never does the wrong thing. A righteous person doesn't even think wrong thoughts. And, uh, and as soon as they do, they become unrighteous. Well, the Bible's clear that we're all unrighteous. And the penalty for unrighteousness is eternal separation from God. A lot of people say, well, hell, you go to a, a lake of fire. But it's separation from God. Because the person that is separated from God for eternity has pretty much decided they didn't want anything to do with God in this lifetime. And that means they won't have anything to do with God for eternity. So there's a lot of ramifications to what you think about God. And out of the world's religions, there's only one. And I, and I, and I hesitate to say that Christianity is a religion. Because it's not. Christianity is a person. That's Jesus Christ. But... We were all unrighteous without God stepping in, sending his son to live a perfect life and to die on the cross for us, paying our way to heaven. In the Old Testament, God's people had to do animal sacrifices, blood sacrifices, to... Uh, have their sins covered. That was pointing to the time when God was going to send his son to die on the cross. And Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He was here. Uh, historians from across the board recognize that fact. There's no denying the fact there was a man named Jesus here 2,000 years ago. The historian Josephus, who is not a Christian, talks about a Jesus at that time who was doing great miracles for the people. There's no denying the fact that Jesus walked on this planet. Now, who do you say that Jesus was? Some say he was just a good man. But he wasn't a, just a good man. Because he claimed to be the Son of God. If he was a good man claiming to be the son of God, then he was not a good man, he was a liar. 
Some say Jesus didn't know that he was God and never said he was God. And he himself pointed to himself just being a good man. But that's not true. All through the, the biblical text of the Gospels, Jesus referred to himself as God. That's why they killed him. That's why they hated him. So where does that put you and I? We're unrighteous and we need help from God to become righteous. And my pastor shared a story of a couple that lost their, uh, their teenage daughter, I think she was, to a, a skiing accident. And they donated her body parts to the people who needed it. And the only caveat was if they wanted to listen to the heartbeat if anybody was able to use her heart. Well, someone was able to use her heart and it saved somebody's life. And they went to a doctor's appointment and the doctor put the stethoscope on their daughter's heart in that new woman's chest. And they could hear the heart, whoop, Danger, danger. I'm going to have to tie off here. Wow, what was that? So their daughter's heart was in this new woman's chest and it saved that woman's life. And they got to hear their daughter's heart beating in that new woman's chest. That's what happens when we trust Jesus as our Savior. God no longer hears our heartbeat. He hears the heartbeat of his son, Jesus, beating in our chest. And it's a phenomenal gift that he has given us, the opportunity to become born again. Now, to become born again, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. You don't have to quit smoking and drinking. You're probably going to want to. But you don't have to quit smoking and drinking and cussing to become a Christian. Uh, what will happen is that's stuff that you work on. And your salvation will never come from your own works. It will only come from the finished work of God's Son. And when he was on the planet, he lived a perfect life. And uh, when he was on the cross dying for us, he said, it is finished. In other words, his work was officially finished and salvation became available to, to you and I and to the rest of the world. And uh, then he, uh, he gave up his spirit and he went straight to heaven for three days and then he came back. Now, when he came back to life three days later, his resurrection, that changed everything. That was the Father, God, putting his seal of approval on the price that Jesus paid on the cross for you, my friend. And uh, in order to become born again, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that there was a Jesus is God's son, that he was on the planet 2,000 years ago, and that he lived a sinless life and that he died on the cross for your sins. And three, year, three, three years, yeah, three days later, uh, he came back to life and he is at the right hand of God today. Uh, if you believe that in your heart, then confess it with your mouth. You will be saved. Because salvation, it doesn't come by any works that you can do on your own. It's all by God's grace. It's a free gift to you. Now, what about all those bad things that you're doing now that you know that God doesn't like? Well, once you become born again, you become his child truly his child and he never condemns his children he will convict you and say well maybe uh you both him and uh he'll have a talk with you and he'll convince you and you'll both come up walking away from the discussion wanting you to quit that bad behavior that's called sin you'll you'll all of a sudden not want to sin anymore. It won't be something you have to clean yourself up to get saved, but it's something that's going to happen because once you become uh, God's uh, child through faith in His Son, 
he starts to, the he sends his holy spirit lives inside you and the holy spirit starts cleaning you up step by slow step and that process is called sanctification but you don't have to give up anything to get saved in fact billy graham used to play the song just as i am at all his crusades when he was doing the altar call to give people the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, like I just did with you. Just as you are right now, you can just turn this video off, pause it, and uh, tell God that you're sorry for the sins you've committed in your life and you realize that you were created for more and that you're trusting that His Son, Jesus, died on the cross for you and that you're repenting of your old way of living and please uh, accept you into his kingdom and uh, and it will be done and let him know that you uh, you believe in the gospel the gospel is Jesus came died for you and was resurrected that's the gospel nothing else there's no other works involved with getting saved so that's that and uh, I've said my piece on it now you know my stance on what it means to be born again and uh, that's uh, all I'll say right now. I'm rusty. I think we found some. There we go. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, a little bluegill. First fish of the 2024 season. Not massive, but he'll eat. If I don't catch many more, I'll let them go. Another little fish surface over there. They're here. There's one. They feel big, but it's only a light action rod. What do we got? Nicer bluegill. Yeah! Yeah! Woohoo! That bad boy. Look at that. Let's measure him. You have to take my word for it. I don't have any camera to. Just eight and a quarter, but this sucker is fat. Much bigger than the other one. All right. That's what I'm talking about, guys. We know sunfish, they don't live by themselves. They live in schools. You catch one, you can usually catch a lot. I'm gonna back up from this little tree here. Oh, look at all those. A bunch of this surface right there. I'm too close. This school is real shallow. They're probably in shallow water to get the warmer water. I don't know. This water is still cold. Look at these turtles. They're stacked up there. Are there a dozen of them? Look at them.
every one of them staring at me. There we go. Guess I didn't forget how to set the hook right. Yeah. Another nice keeper. He's look, he'll eat. He'll eat. About the same size as the other one. The bigger one. See that okay? There we go. Feels good. Feels good. What is it? Oh no. Oh no. A crappie. A nice sized one too. Nice. Crappie's in the bluegill school. And crappie travel in schools too. So this seems to be a nice little spot. Our inquiry mind's got to know. I thought it was a bass. Inquiry minds need to know how big this guy is. Again, you got to take me at my word. I don't have a ten and a quarter. That will eat here in Michigan. We don't have a size limit. I know down in Mississippi, I was watching on the J-Line, he said there's a 12-inch limit where he was fishing. I don't think I've ever caught a 12-inch crappie here in Michigan. Another one. Feels good. A crappie or a bluegill? Ah, oh, look at him. Yes, bluegill. Nice one, nice one. Not as big as the last, but bigger than the first. And I kept the first because I'm the one that... Ooh, he's a fatty too. A fatty. I'll clean him up nicely. Starting to get a basket of fish. There's one. Feels nice. Of course, they all do on this rod. Another eater. Not as big as the last ones, but that's typical size bluegill I eat. Oh yeah, he feels good. Maybe a crappie? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah.
Eater. Looks like we're having bluegill and crappie fillets for dinner. Is that keto? That's pretty much keto in my book. Can't have the fried potatoes with it, but that's all right. Who likes fried potatoes with their fish anyway? Everybody. Well, that's gonna do it. I don't have much time left. I gotta get home and uh, get ready for class tonight. Bible study class. So I'm gonna go home and clean these up and uh, get them cooked up. We'll try that new uh, fish crisp. Got my microphones all messed up. Man. Hot mess over here. watching this video if you got any entertainment out of it or for kept you from being bored you know for what two minutes can you do me a favor and hit the like button that would really help my young channel out also consider subscribing uh, that's up to you but I appreciate you getting this far into the video uh, thanks a lot and uh, I'll see you next video